So you guys might have noticed that I've been doing more high bar training lately, and that's obviously because I want to get my legs bigger, but I think that using variations in this way is a very, very important part of programming to get stronger and to get bigger. So today I'm going to walk you through some of my past training videos from this past week where I just switched to low bar training, and then from some earlier weeks where I was performing high bar training. And I'm going to show you what I look for when I'm analyzing my own videos so that you can get better at doing that yourself. I'm also going to talk about how I transition from one style to the other so that you get some ideas on how you can set up your own programming if you want to incorporate both in that way. So we're actually going to start with my high bar squats from last week. This is my top set of 565. And I want you to start by noticing how good my abs look. And then I want you to pay attention to the rep speed on these, especially towards the bottom of the rep, the second half. So you can see I kind of start out. Rep speed is pretty constant all the way down. And then it, obviously it slows a little bit towards the sticking point on the way up. Just remember that when we go back and discuss, discuss the high bar lifts. The second thing I want you to notice is the relative position of my torso as I complete the lift. So you'll notice I stay fairly upright during the descent, right? But then as I come out of the hole, I kind of lean forward. And then I have to push backwards. It might be a little bit hard to make out, but I have to push backwards in order to stay upright. And that is because I have relatively weak quads relative to my lower back. And so in order to recruit as much lower back as possible, I'm trying to lean forward, but that low bar position puts me in that really awkward angle that you can see right there. And I probably shouldn't have taken that rep. Um, but as a result, I'm in a little bit of a, a position where it's less comfortable for me. And so this is a great accessory for me to bring up my lagging quads as long as I don't allow myself to do that. So check out this back offset with much lighter weight and see how my torso angle doesn't change nearly as bad, right? There's still a little bit of incline coming out of the hole, but it's much, much less drastic. And in general, these types of high rep training where you're keeping good form throughout the entire range of motion, they're going to be a much, much better way to bring up your weak points than that 565 set was. And the reason I knew it was time to change to low bar training was because that was the first time I'd had a high bar set where I hadn't been able to hold my position. So then I know, okay, it's time to move on to the next thing. So the next thing is low bar. And this is my top set from this week, all right? Now, uh, this was the first time doing low bar in quite a while. And so this session was more or less me trying to figure out, okay, what's the right position for me? I, you know, you kind of lose that feel after a little while. So it's just like learning to ride a bike, it comes right back, but you have to feel it out. So I think this is 590, so it's a little bit heavier than last week, fewer reps. Um, I do not like to do high rep training for, for low bar. Um, but I, I was pretty happy with it. You can see I have a little bit of a hip shift going on. My right hip, or left hip rather, was very, very tight going in this session. I knew this was going to be an issue. I'm not too concerned about it. I just got to work that hip more. I'm going in for body work today. It's not a big deal. The thing I want you to pay attention to, though, is look how much slower my rep speed is compared to the high bar. I'm trying to stay tight throughout the entire range of motion, and I'm able to do that because I can recruit more hamstrings. We'll get back to that in a second. I do want to show you all depth because I get a lot of criticism on that that I think is very unfair. Um, yes, they look high from the front. You can see from the side. Um, maybe some of the middle reps, which I don't even anal bother analyzing are right there but i mean the first and last rep are clearly deep enough and it's a little ridiculous to me that people think that they can judge depth from the front we go back to this more we'll, we'll see a side view of every set that's something that's been requested of me a lot the good thing about a side view for me is that i can see okay when do i start to use too much back but let's get back to this front view so we talked about last time how I was able to stay tight and control my rep speed more because I'm able to engage my glutes and hamstrings better on the low bar squat. Now remember, for me, the quads are a weak point, and so it's going to be tricky to find a balance between using enough amount of quad, enough amount of hamstring and glute, and enough amount of lower back. And being able to balance all those three is key to being able to perform at your best. Now on this set, again, I'm trying to find the right position, and I think my stance was a little too narrow. And you can see that in a variety of ways. First, so that's kind of fucking hard. Um, I'm coming forward on my toes uh, a lot more than I would like on this set. You can't see that part from this angle. Um, but I also think I'm cutting them a, a tad high. And you can see that better on the, 
side view. Um, and that's really coming because my stance is maybe a, an inch too narrow. Um, and that little bit of a difference for me um, can mean a big difference in performance. And so here you can see the side view um, and you can actually see that, I'm gonna see if I can pause one of these. So it's actually a little bit higher than the, the previous set was even with that narrower stance. And uh, consistency is very, very important. That's my goal. And so even though the ones on the left from the back offset, they're not terrible by any means, uh, I want to make sure that everything's being the same every time because that's the only way I can make everything exactly the same in competition. Now, for this third back offset, I think it was a, a case of Goldilocks where I really just nailed everything. I had the right bar position. I had the right stance. I had remembered um, one of the things that I've forgotten to keep the weight on the outside of my foot. And everything really came together in this set, which is why I ended on that set. I always like to end on a high note. I think a lot of people try and push past that part, push past that point and just end up wearing themselves out a little bit too much. In addition, the third, the last rep of this set was a little bit harder than the last rep of the last set, so that's another good indicator. It's time to call the workout for the day. So this was by far, I think, the, the best, best set that I performed all day. Uh, makes sense because, you know, you're trying to get back used to the form. It's going to take you a few a few working sets to really get, get comfortable with it. But you can see I'm keeping tight throughout the entire range of motion. My stance is right in between what I did for the top set and what I did for that first back off which is exactly where I want it. The rep speed is pretty smooth throughout. You can also notice I do have a little teeny bit of that, uh, that same torso lean that we saw in the high bar squat, but um, I'm less concerned about it with the low bar because I'm less likely to fall forward in a low bar squat, especially when I put my wraps on and can use them for support um, in that very first couple inches of the range of motion. This is the side view. You can see this, I think, is absolutely perfect depth. Um, I never like to, to bury reps like you saw on that high bar squat set because you're never going to bury a rep in competition. If you are, you're just wasting energy. You want to go to the point where there's no doubt that you're below parallel, but no, for, no deeper than that. Um, and the failure to be able to do so is a failure in technique, in my opinion. So the last thing that we're going to look at for the day is one accessory exercise. I'll try to add an accessory to each of these videos. So it's not too boring, but at the same time, um, you're getting a little bit of exposure to what I do outside of my competition lifts. Glute ham raise, one of my absolute favorite, but I think a lot of people do them wrong. When you're focused on these, you're focused... Uh, when you're doing these, your focus needs to be on making your body perfectly straight, almost in a plank position at the bottom. Uh, and then as you curl up, you're honestly, you're trying to keep your glutes squeezed tight throughout the entire range of motion. And the primary mover should be the hamstrings. Extraordinarily difficult. And it's even more difficult when you hold the weight on top of your head like I did for the first couple reps. I couldn't even do that for more than two or three. And that's only 10 pounds. Um, so, you know, if you're loading these up, you're probably doing them wrong. You're probably using a lot of lower back to assist in the movement. So there's three things I want you to take away from this video. The first is that you have to give yourself time to adjust to new, new variations, right? I couldn't switch right away to low bar. It took me a few sets to really feel that out. And even if a variation isn't really new to you, even if it's something that you've practiced a lot, it's probably going to take you a little while to get used to it. The second is that I knew it was time to transfer from high bar to low bar when I noticed that my form with high bar started to break down a little bit, right? I started to lean forward too much. And once you see those errors in technique, A, you're really not getting what you should be getting out of the exercise. And B, it probably means you've milked all the easy gains you're going to get out of that exercise already. And it's time to move on to something else. The third thing I want to keep in mind is that regardless of which variation I was trying to perform, I needed to pay attention to the nuances in my technique to make sure that I was doing them right. Okay, so we talked about leaning forward in the, in the high bar squat, we talked about staying tight in the low bar squat, finding the right stance, keeping the weight on the right parts of our feet. So next time, I'm going to do a more of an instructional video talking about the differences between high bar and low bar and how to perform them. So for example, we'll talk about where to place the bar on your back, right? On your traps versus your rear delts. We'll talk about um, positioning. We'll talk about cues, where to keep your hips, where to put your knees, etc., so that you can perform both variations more effectively. One last thing I want to note, we're not going to stop doing the high quality videos, Kyle and I, my photographer. Uh, we filmed one last week. It was great for various reasons. We can't use it. So uh, we're going to redo that one and we're going to keep cranking out these awesome videos. So they haven't gone anywhere. My Instagram might not be that uh, 
active for a little while. Apparently Instagram has like banned me or something because none of my posts show up on the explore page. They don't come up on hashtag search pages. So I'm getting like, nobody's seeing my videos. And so it's, it's frustrating and stupid, but I'm just gonna take a break from that platform for a little bit and focus more on YouTube where I can share better instructional stuff anyway. So this is really a great opportunity for me. And I really appreciate that y'all have chosen to follow my YouTube channel. If you do have questions, you have ideas for content that you would like me to put out, uh, please do so. I will still be obviously posting on Elite FTS, Barband, and my own site. So you can check out all that content there. I will have a full write-up about this post, uh, this video on Barband that should be coming out in the next couple of days. And so I'll link to it below. And I really appreciate you all watching. I'll see you all next time.